YouTube. Today we're going to do the unboxing of a Gerard Anello. And here we go. There's the instruction manual. This one's set up for 300 blackout as well as 6.8. Some sort of frame, I guess that's for the feed. There are the two discs for the blackout and the 6.8. And that there is the propane torch. Let's see if I can pull this out. Wow, I'm stronger than I thought. Oh, that bad boy is going on the bench. That is one big bad boy. And there it is. Seems to be one last thing left in the box. What might that be? Oh, that's the feed plate. It has four heavy duty rubber feet. It's a well put together machine. Uh, heavy that I use for the installation which is just a small wrench I believe it's a six inch wrench and uh, my little screwdriver with that attachment so I can get into there without too much of an issue. Then the blade to cut my Teflon tape and that's pretty much it. It's a quarter inch bolt uh, it needs a 7 16 wrench and the nut is on the other side however it's held in place uh, by a very very nice system which attaches to the front of the base and kind of pulls it in. This little doohickey here, the torch, as you can see will not work in this fashion so it has to be further adjusted here. Okay, I did some adjustment to the actual housing here so the flame could point upwards. When it comes packed, it comes packed in such a way that I guess it's to ergonomically safe space. As I said before, this has a very nice setup inside to hold it in place. This is all just hand tight. The propane holder is quite simple to put in. Basically you just squeeze the levers. It allows for taking it in and out through these little holes here. Heavy gauge, all nicely insulated so when the tank does go in it does not in any way um, hit the bare metal so it's nicely adjusted so once I put in the propane tank it'll go over the top this will be the configuration of how you're going to put your back plate and your frame for your annealer these two screws right here for the left uh, side as you're looking at it from the front these two are for the right side of the frame and the brackets you're going to need a hex type screwdriver something like this because as you can see these are not Phillips head so play with it find one that works I'm not sure what size this is and once I do find out I will put it up there uh, what I found of interest is that the holes on the frames are smaller than the holes on the back frame however the screws do not have nuts with them so either they're going to go in this way and they will hold this back somehow under pressure. Remove the two screws where I'm going to put my bracket. I've only put in one side of the bracket and attached it to the face plate or the back plate. I was doing some trial and error to see what works best and apparently what works best is to actually put in the frame first that would be this part without the backing and that will make it easier because the weight of the backing is substantial when you're trying to screw in small little screws in small little areas and trying to keep everything lined up is a little more difficult than it needs to be so put in your frames first on these two screws here, two screws here and then attach the back plate to the screws through the back. You're just doing this for size comparison with the box in the back and you can see they are smaller one from the as you can see the little screw just comes out very nicely very very nicely so this side we're just going to put in the 
present it here. So. Caught. I would just say don't even try to line them both up until you've got one caught. And just kind of present it a little bit. Damn. Present the next screw. So like I said, I think this is much easier to put in the frame first than it is to try to put in the back plate and then the frame going nicely, whereas the first one is not that easy. And my holes are already lined up, so it, I mean, it's a nice engineering job on the part of, I believe his name is Jod, Doug Gerard. Propane tanks uh, require that you use some sort of either dope or um, Teflon tape. So I have Teflon tape on hand and I'm going to do it, uh, I believe it's clockwise in this case because it goes this way. Yeah, it, it clockwise because it, in order to thread it, it goes this way. And I already tested the thread to make sure that's the way it is. Tape is on. Not pretty, but it'll work. Putting on the tape. Male fitting into the propane torque. Set it up to see pretty much the the machine is working, which it is. The motor's quite small, I was very amazed. But then again, this is not such a huge setup. And as you can see, that's my 223 family that I'm going to use for the blackout. It's working very nicely. The clearances are great. Uh, I'm sure the, the shells are going to fall just beautifully. And that's for the... 0.457 which is for the 308 and also 6.8 or two cases I should say and now it's gonna go down it's gonna fall down wow that was amazing I thought it actually was gonna fall down wow and see had I had my torch set up and everything this would be a thing of beauty Okay, boom, got it. Next one coming. Wow, that is beautiful. That is one beautiful machine. And the way it works. Hats off to Gerard. Nice. Now it's in there nice and snug. It's not going anywhere. I mean, it's snug. I have an AR uh, lighter. And we're going to open up the tank. Adjustment for speed back here, on and off switch as well. Turn off the regulator here.